All right, it is one o'clock, so we're going to get started here with our webinar today. Um, we've got a great topic queued up for you, AI and your business, how to shift tasks into AI. I'm Lori Hybe, CEO and founder of Keystone Click, we're a strategic digital marketing agency helping our clients build brand awareness and generate leads online. Today, my guest is Kathy Phillips. She is the Chief Growth Officer and Marketing AI Institute, leading growth efforts for the Marketing AI Academy and MyCon, the AI event for marketers, which is taking place next week. We'll talk about that a little bit further. With a history in content marketing, marketing leadership, service sector, and nonprofit marketing, as well as being a former small business owner, Kathy ex is excited to share how AI can power the marketing we're doing today. She also loves building and being part of a community. Connect with her to learn more about the Marketing AI Institute community. All right, Kathy, so excited for you to be here. This is a long time coming. I feel like we've been talking about this for months. I know. It's, it's hard <laughs> to get everyone's schedules together and, and make it work. And, you know, there's just lots of things going on. So, um, yeah, I've got I've got a couple of questions for you. I know you've got a lot of good insights and perspectives to share. Um, in the meantime, if anyone is interested and has a question for you, please throw it in the chat um, or in the QA and we'll do our best to answer all of these questions at the on the second half of this webinar. So, Kathy. Let's get started with some high-level AI questions. For the general public here, um, how can you best describe what AI is and why it's something to be paying attention to in our business? So I'm going to use one of our CEO, Paul Reitzer's ex explanations. I think it's the best one. I can't you know, think of a better way to put it, but he said, so Demis Hassabis, who is the founder of Google DeepMind, he says that AI is the science of making machine smart. So we like to say that marketing AI is the science of making marketers smart. So it's basically, it's helping as we're trying to use these technologies, AI powered technologies are learning as we're learning. So it's not us manually doing all these things, everything from our email to our CRM, all the things we're doing on a daily basis, we are manually going in and making these rules, making lists, making segments, doing all these different things, for versions of copy and all of that even though we're using technology is manual from the human side. And some of these technologies, we can put some rules into place and put some goals into place and the AI can just help us do it, which is fabulous. So it's helping us do our, you know, it's just basically augmenting the stuff we're doing and helping take some of those rote repetitive things off of our plates. I love that. And um, I know eventually you're going to share some of the things that you've done, which I'm excited for. But before we dive into that, how much time do you think you've saved by leveraging AI in your business processes? So I actually was just on a news interview for a local TV station. And I told this story that our podcast, I am our podcast producer who came to the Institute with zero experience in podcast producing. <laughs> and, you know, Paul said, oh, you'll do that. And I was like, awesome. I have zero, I don't know what I'm doing. So I found, or he told me about this tool called Descript and I use Descript to produce the podcast among other tools through the process. So from podcast production through repurposing for blog posts, repurposing for social media, short snippet videos for social, all these things, I added up that that would take me if done manually, even transcription, if, if done manually, that should take someone or some people 20 hours 20 human hours a week to produce the podcast the right way. Mm -hmm. And we've got it down to two and a half hours. Wow. So, and a lot of it is just the technology that many of us are using. Many of us have been do doing transcription, which is AI mm -hmm. for a long time. But um, so all these different things I'm using, A, I couldn't, I didn't know how to do it. I don't know how to edit videos. Um, although I'm learning, I'm getting much better. But in Descript, the way that they do it is, Instead of going through and looking at the wave file and trying to delete, you know, down to the hundredth of a second, I can go in and I can delete the words I don't want included mm. and it edits, it clips the video. Like this morning I was editing, um, the podcast coming out tomorrow morning and Paul and Mike were talking about Cassie Kozarov from Google, who is one of our keynotes. And they were just making, Mike said, can you just confirm how you pronounce her name so we can say it right on, on air. And that's at the beginning of the podcast. Well, clearly I don't want that in there. So all I did was just delete those words. And then the start of the podcast was all queued up. So wow, it's, again, it's things I had to do, but it's just doing it for me faster. Like why make, 
you know, work smarter, not harder, basically yeah. you know, find the things that can help us do the things we need to do. Totally. Love that. All right. Um, so those are some big wins, but what are, um, what are some of the biggest challenges that you think you've solved with AI? Well, we're a very small team and mm -hmm. there are five of us. So I think between Mike and I, we do the bulk of, and certainly Paul does, but I think we do the bulk of the usage of these tools. And it's just when I'm running all the marketing, Mike's running all the content and we're two people and we're trying to produce all these resources, um, produce the event, market the event, do all these things. It's just like we can't. And since ChatGPT came out, our worlds have blown up. Mm -hmm. So just trying to figure out how can we get this all done? So our, the biggest win is that we're getting everything done. And certainly there's, we always have room for improvement. Yep. But generally speaking, we're getting, we're getting through a lot of things with very, very few people. Um, and now we're in the process of actually hiring two people, which is exciting, but that that's not yet. So we have to keep making sure everything's getting done. I'm so excited. Sure. To have some help. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I could just say from my own personal experience and how you are projecting yourself, you know, to the public, you definitely look like a significantly larger organization than just, just five people. So good job. Yeah. So I do think, you know, getting the amount of things that done that we want to do, I think it's surfacing things we hadn't thought about, you know, we're able to do analyze things a little bit faster than we would have. So how can that give us better insights to pivot quicker, to make smarter decisions, or if, you know, Mike's looking at here's 10 blog post topics that would re be really great right now. Why can't AI help us figure out, let's start with these two first, mm -hmm. because they all sound great, but we're, what makes the most sense for actions our customers are taking. Sure. And again, you could spend hours going through your data and figuring that out yourself, but if there's tools to help you do that, why not let them help you? Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I'm all about efficiency and it's just taking the time to really understand, to learn how to, the, to yes. use the tools the right way. I think that that's probably a barrier that a lot of people are seeing. Um, and that's probably one of the challenges we do have right now is that I know there are smarter ways for us to be doing a few things that we're doing and we just don't have time right now. So maybe mm -hmm. after the event, we can block off some time. And I actually said to Paul earlier this week, he's been playing around with Claude too and Anthropic and uh, chat or yeah, chat GPT code interpreter mm -hmm. and all these things. I'm like, can we just dedicate one hour a month that the five of us and soon to be seven of us are sitting together where he can just say, here's what I did. Here's what I used. And let's, I want you all to look at this because that would just save me an hour of my life trying to figure it out. And he can just show us an actual use case that I would understand. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely makes sense. Um, so you talked a little bit about like the podcasting. Can you share some of those tools that you're using and how um, you've really leaned into creating efficiencies? Yeah. So Descript is the one I said first, it's just Descript.com. And mm -hmm. so that helped me both from the standpoint of editing the videos, mm -hmm. there's a switch you can just toggle on called studio sound. And what studio sound does is it makes it level, makes it sound like you're in a studio, removes background noise. Uh, Mike's recording usually in the office. Paul's usually at his home office. Mm -hmm. It levels out their voices. You can just do some easy manipulation, manipulation that actually I can do. And I'm, again, not a sound recorder. And I'm sure a sound recorder will listen to it and say, this could be a little bit better. But for what we need it for, it's helping a ton. Yeah. And there's a couple other things. So it's transcribing it for us. And then I also do use Writer to do some summarization of the podcast. So we do four blog posts after each episode, we do show notes, mm -hmm. uh, which include the embed embeds for the podcast audio, as well as video. We do sure. sh show notes, we do uh, timestamps. So that's our show notes page, which is pretty standard. And then we do the way the podcast is produced is there's three or formatted is there's three different topics that are covered. So each topic gets a media or blog post from Mike and Mike can take the audio the transcription, put it into one of these tools and it will summarize that for him. So, and I've been wow. testing that with writer as well. Nice. And then we put everything on YouTube and I use Canva to create that cover photo for mm -hmm. YouTube. So our YouTube is pretty, um, and removing backgrounds of Mike's headshot and Paul's headshot. So it looks like they're together, even though it doesn't look like they're together, but just makes it look, it's a prettier picture. Sure. Um, that's AI background remover is AI. So there's a lot of things that we're doing that we may not even realize actually is artificial intelligence. And then I'm really, really excited to dive into gloss AI, G L O S S 
AI. I forget. Okay. Anyway, what they can do is they could take this big file, the video file, and they can AI scrubs the podcast and it can create short snippet videos automatically. Ah, versus cool. me listening to it and going in and saying, okay, this was a really good sound bite. This was a really good sound bite. It will, based on its knowledge, it will go through and say these these few snippets are either really real poignant or they're a great summarization of the entire podcast. So wow. yeah, and I did the demo and I was like, oh my gosh. And they're actually the tech partner at Macon. So they're doing some of our Macon videos to show me oh, how cool. that works, which I'm really excited about. And again, I would like to go through and say, that actually wasn't a good representation of the podcast. So let's not use that one. So we still very much need humans to take all these outputs and make sure they're actually what we need. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's important to share too. Oh, I love that. Um, Do you have any, any demonstration you want to show us or um, Um, I don't know. (laughs) I'm sorry. I threw that one at you. No, that's okay. That's okay. But I I can go through and I can show you a real quick version of script i'll show you actually a live and in person um this was from today so can you see it up everything okay yeah yeah okay so sorry for that scrolling is not fun to watch when you're watching someone's screen but if i'm way up here and let's see so here paul says we normally record this on we're actually recording on fridays normally we record on mondays and say we're like okay that's just not something I really need to have in here, Mm -hmm. all I would do would be highlight it and delete it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just crazy. And then, you know, instead of me going down here to this audio file, where normally I'd have to sit here and just drag this, figure out where it starts and where it ends and all of that, making sure I clip it in the right spot. AI can help me with that. And then over here is where the studio sound is and you just toggle that on and then it takes, you know, 10 minutes to clean it up just to make it removes the background noise, does all of that. Uh, and then, so, th- you know, and then when I first pull the file into Descript, what it does is if I was starting like a new project, I actually just did a, I have a template I use for the podcast just so I don't have to redo the intro and outro every single time. Right. that when I go into here, because here's the intro and then here's mm-hmm. thanks for listening. So here's where I put the file every time. And all I would do would be drag a file into here and just sit back and wait a minute and it transcribes it. And then when I do bring a file in, <clears throat> it says, oh, you have two people who are on the podcast or you know, in this file, would you like to identify the voices? And it will go through and then it will play a 10 second clip and I'll say, okay, that's Paul. And then, okay, that's Mike. And it'll go through the entire our podcast and it will tell me this was Paul, this was Mike, which is great for a UX from an attend, you know, from a viewer listener standpoint, sure. if they're in the show notes, it just is easier to, you know, to digest when you can see that those broken up chunks. And then for me, if I'm ever doing any repurposing on my end, like I know Paul said this, I know Mike said this, it's just easier for me to find it. Yeah. So the script is like magical. It I looks like it. I, I mean, I mean, I'm in here more for just the podcast. I do our webinars in here. Yeah. I do um, what else? Our webinars, our podcast. I've done I've done some short videos for some things I've been doing to promote the event. I've been able to go in here, so it's pretty amazing all the things that that you can do with it. Yeah, I love that. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, all right. So, you know, I asked a number of questions. I'm going to just throw this to the listeners right now mm-hmm. and everyone that's watching. If you do have any questions for Kathy, feel free to throw them in the, the chat or the Q&A uh, on, on the Zoom here. But um, while you're doing that, I'm going to ask you, what do you think is important that I'm not asking you right now about AI? I think, you know, we talked about a few of the Miscon, you know, in our when we were chatting beforehand, just a few of the misconceptions about AI. You know, people ask, "Is this plagiarism?" Mm-hmm. And the way I would describe it is, say, you and I were talking about you coming to Cleveland, and you were like, "What should I do while you're in town?" Well, I've lived here my whole entire life, mm-hmm. so I could say, "Go to the Metro Parks, go to the Art Museum, go to this." And it's not, I'm not taking anyone's content and spitting that back to you and like stealing their thoughts. I'm taking what I've learned over my life mm-hmm. and 
how I, what, what are the best things that I can tell you about this city? Where if you were going to go to in a chat GPT and it was, and it would give you an output of visit these few places. Sure. It's because it read it, it part of that model. It was trained on all these articles about Cleveland. So it's making the best guess basically um, it can to give you what you, what it thinks you want. So that's kind of how these work. It's like, it's not plagiarizing. It's just taking all its learnings and giving you this output as best it knows how. Yeah. An assumption. An assumption. It's not a correct a hundred percent of the time. Yeah, because people are like, you know, it hallucinates, it gives bad information, it's wrong. And it's like, well, yes, it, because it's only giving you information based on what it knows. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was doing some Macon promotions a couple of years ago and I used copy.ai, which is wonderful. Mm-hmm. However, they all need to be checked, you know, all of them. There's not one that's perfect by any means, but I put in like a hundred word description of the event, put in the URL and the first output that came out that said Macon comma happening in San Francisco. <laughs> but if you think about it, tech events are held there, marketing yeah. events are held there. So it was like, based on what it knew, it maybe was right. You know, that's where it assumed it was based on the knowledge that it had on where you conferences usually are held. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. It's, I know. It's, it's funny how that, I appreciate the process that AI kind of goes through to put, come up with this information. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really important for people to double check the work, I guess, the output. Um, and, and let's talk about this a little bit, copyright. Um, I know there's a lot of questions on like who owns it and, and, you know, you know, copyright infringement on some components of AI as well. So you can you speak to that at all? So I will preface this by, I'm not a lawyer. Yep. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> I do not pretend to be. I just know what I know as a marketer. And so the U.S. Copyright Office today says that anything that is copyrightable must be human written, not AI written. So it doesn't say not AI written. Yeah. It just says yeah. not human written. Yep. So if I, the way I think we think about that on our team and the way we say it in our intro to AI classes and other places is think about where you're going to use that content. And if I'm going to use it on my website for my main website copy, someone has the ability to completely strip your entire website, duplicate it, and you don't have a leg to stand on because you didn't write it. Yeah. How that will be proven is who's, who's to say, I don't know yet, Yeah, (laughs) but for all intents and purposes, you didn't write that. So you can't claim it as your own. Mm -hmm. Uh, Same thing with blog posts. If someone jump goes on your website, which we've had it happen numerous times with stuff we actually did write as humans, where someone takes our content and we just send a cease and desist. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't depending on if we can track down the company. But if you care about those things, And if you want to take that chance, you know, live your life, do what you want. But if there are certain things that are your explicit, that you want to make sure that you own, I'd be very leery right now of using AI to do that. And then even if you change 51% of it, the only part that really is copyrightable is the 51% you changed, not the. That was going to be my next question. Okay. AI generated. Yeah. Again, so, though, how, how is this proven? How do you, how I mean, is it proven? And that's, yeah. you know, there's going to be things in the legal court systems for years and years and years. So right now we just kind of need to do the right thing. And as marketers and as humans, just, you know, what's that just be good people, you know, it's yeah. sounds silly to say, but you know, we just need to kind of do the right thing. Um, but there are things like if you're, if you're trying to think about how to create something and you need an outline, use, use AI to help you write your outline. Yep. Um, how have it helped you in the, your ideation process? Have you, you know, all, all the podcast stuff I'm doing because it's our content that I'm iterating from and repurposing from that's okay because I own the six or our company owns that 60 minutes of Mike and Paul talking. Sure. So me using it to repurpose is okay. Okay. So it's just trying to find that use case, you know, Tamara on our team uses it to tweak some sales emails. Yep. And again, she may not even use it, but she says, you know, here's what I was saying. Here's what, what I'm trying to achieve what would you, how would you change this? Yeah. And there have been some things she was like, oh my gosh, I could never say that. But there are some <laughs> that she's like, well, it actually sounds interesting. Yeah. Um, yep. Or um, just where, where are some places that it could help you? And one example is last week or two weeks ago, I did a presentation 
on, you know, a lot of it was my podcast process, but it was a lot of what I'm doing as a marketer Mm -hmm. using artificial intelligence. And I was like, okay, I added a few slides I hadn't put into presentations before. It was a different audience. I knew what I wanted to say, but I was just trying to figure out like, okay, if this is just a little bit of a twist from what I'm normally doing, but here's what I want my output. Here's what I want the outcome to be. Here's what I want the attendees to walk away with. Yeah. And I'm just missing that flow. I'm just, something's not clicking with me. And I just am having a mental block. So I put all of that into one of these tools and I said, can you give me the right order of these slides and how the flow, how I can segue from one thing to the next. And it did. Wow. And I changed it. I changed yeah. some things around. I'm like, okay, I get what you're saying. I get what you gave me, but this actually would make more sense up here because once I talk about this, it makes sense for me to go to this next thing. Sure. But man, it saved me a lot, <laughs> saved me a lot of time and a lot of headache and just yeah. stress. Of like, what am I, what am I trying to do? And, you know, when you have so much to do sometimes it's like, I don't know where to start. Yep. And it's gotten me through some of those starting points. Totally. Yeah. I've used, I've used it for like outline for presentations or Mm -hmm. outline for an ebook or something, just the kind of, like you said, here's all the things I want to make sure I say, what's the right order that I should be saying these things to really be able to connect and resonate with, you know, the person that's seeing, viewing, reading, you know, this, this document. So, so cool. Very cool. I was uh, about a month ago, I was at a chamber of commerce and I was talking to the women who I've become close with. We've just been talking a lot. And I, so I went to her presentation. I said, oh, I did a project for you. And I went through and I helped you figure out your next 12 months of programming for your chamber, monthly chamber meetings. And it was, you know, operations, here's three bullet points of topic ideas. Here's, you know, marketing, sales, Mm -hmm. service, whatever. And so I, and she was like, why'd you do that? And I said, I didn't do any of it. I put in a chat GPT. I'm a programming chair of a chamber of commerce organization. And I am in charge. I am tasked with coming up with 12 months of meetings. Give me uh, topics that would matter to anything from small business to enterprise. And what are some pain points they all have? So give me like all of these different departments, parts of the business, and give me three topic ideas on what what we, what we possibly could talk about. And she was like, are you kidding me? And it happened, you know, it was just, I, my prompt had to be right. So yeah. I had to make sure that what I was entering was right. Sure. And then she said that was, you know, six people, the, the executive committee sitting down together for two hours. So that's 12 hours of human hours that you just whittled down to about three minutes. Yeah. She's like now we can spend those 12 hours making these programs remarkable. Yeah. So it's just shifting that time to things that, and that's fun, you know, making those meetings yeah. fun, getting the right people, talking to your customers. Computers are not going to replace take talking to your customers, or they shouldn't, in my opinion. No, absolutely not. No, I, I agree with you on that. That's so cool. Thanks for sharing that story for sure. Um, looks like you know, no big questions. So um, why don't we wrap it up with you sharing all about MyCon, any additional um, comments or details? I know you said you've just got a couple more tickets left, but this is you're almost at selling out, which is pretty exciting. I know it is very exciting. Um, so, so Macon is the marketing AI conference and is happening July 26th through the 28th here in Cleveland, Ohio. And we'll have about 700 attendees and we have speakers. We have Cass- Cassie Kozarov, who's the chief decision scientist at Google. We have Ethan Mollick, who is a professor at Wharton School of Business at University of Pennsylvania. And then a lot of people that you may know in the AI marketing space. And then some of my favorite parts of the event, and you know, Laura, I think you could agree, is we've got about 20, I think, breakout sessions that are all really focused on here's what's my problem, here's how I used AI, here's what tools I used, and here's what my outcome was. And here, yeah, so you so can leave exciting. there and just be like, hey, actually, A, I need that, and B, I can do that. Uh, we have about, I think about 15 uh, booths with technology, AI power technologies coming in. So it's cool. nice to be able to have that FaceTime with technologies and just say, okay, here's what I'm trying to do. And tell me, you know, because you don't want to go buy a tool just because everyone else has it. You really sure. need to you have that use case and you have a need for it. And that's yeah. something, that, you know, your whole team can onboard. But all the things we're doing from the podcast standpoint, we spend under a hundred dollars a month and we're saving what? 68 hours of, of time. So that's some of these tools you might think like, oh, it's $20 a month, but then you like figure out what you could actually do with it. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's actually going to save me a lot of money. Yeah. Love that. So cool. And then um, just mycon.com, right? Is that, uh, yep. M A I C O N dot A I. Dot A I. All right. I'm glad I asked that. Okay. <laughs> Great. Well, um, I look forward to seeing you next week. I'm super excited for, um, for the conference I attended last year and it blew me away. And so super excited to, I have no idea what I, to expect from what I'm going to learn. <laughs> I mean, I've been doing my best to stay on top of things, but I know it's just going to be mind blowing and amazing. Um, so thank you so much, Kathy. I really appreciate you taking the time to share your experience and some of the tools that you're using to create efficiencies. Oh, well, thank you. And if anyone watching has any questions about the Institute or Macon, we've got an intro to AI class that happens every three weeks. Uh, let me know. I'm happy to help whether you can come to Cleveland or not, but let's stay in touch. All right. Have a good one. Thanks. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.